God has come to reveal to us the futility of life without God. Sometimes we activate purpose and calling in our life. Sometimes has come to restore intimacy and fellowship. The land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw a great light, and to them which sat in the region and the shadow of death, light is sprung up. Encounters come to restore intimacy. Encounters come to reveal to us the futility of life. If you don't have a relationship with God, anything of value can become God to you. Welcome to Encounter Jesus Ministries, sustaining an experiential knowledge of God and walking in the fullness of our eternal ordination. Now, listen to God's servant, Apostle Oropo Michael, as he takes us through an encounter with the Word. glory in Jesus precious name we are praised please be seated so I'll just share a few things with us last week we we considered a very important subject the subject of thanksgiving and two major things that stood out in that teaching was the fact that through thanksgiving God is glorified and we said we owe it to the Lord to live our lives in a way that glorify him praise God and then we said, secondly, through, through thanksgiving, multiplication is engendered. He said in Acts chapter 2 verse 47, as they were praising the Lord and giving thanks, he said the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. In Jeremiah 30 verse 19, the Bible made us understand. He said, I will increase them, they will not be small. I will lift them up, they will, not be, they will be great. And he said, I will multiply them constantly. So multiplication is a product of thanksgiving. And so many of you already are experiencing multiplication in different aspects of your life. If you're having that experience already, can you wave? Not religiously, you're already experiencing multiplication. Look at that. Give the Lord a big hand. And so tonight, very quickly, no, we we'll respect time. I will just speak to us for 40 minutes on another very important mystery that will help us bet the purposes of God for our lives. If there is one thing you must insist on doing, it should be the ability to bet that which God has spoken concerning you, even before the foundation of the world. Every one of us walking on the face of the earth today is not a mistake. Even those who are born out of wedlock are not a mistake. The moment you come into time, something was written concerning you before the foundations of the world. There is no miscalculation from the part of man that can outdo God's plan. So whichever way you came into time, there is something that was written concerning you. And so the crisis of life is not the absence of a purpose. The crisis of life is the inability to bet that purpose that concerns you. And when I began to consider the subject of purpose deeply and diligently, what scared me the most is the fact that a man can be prepared yet not fulfill purpose. You know, many times when we are talking about destiny, when we are talking about impact, when we are talking about life that is, is relevant to a generation, we build our niche, our tent around preparation. But I came to understand from scriptures that not everybody who is adequately prepared still manifests in their generation. That means you can be prepared and yet not manifest. Because there are sensitive decisions that seasons require for people to carry out that they miss out on. And because they are not carrying out those season sensitive decisions, even though they are prepared, they fail to manifest. That is why you have people in lamentation. They are wondering, I've done everything there is to do. I have followed mentors. I have lived according to the precepts that they, they prescribed. 
yet my life is failing. Why have I done what Mr. A and Mr. B are doing, yet I'm not prospering? Because apart from preparation, there are seizing sensitive decisions that people must know and apply in order to be relevant. Because I don't have so much time, I will just stick to a few scriptures here this evening to open our eyes to something that is very important. Number one, I want to begin from Luke chapter 1 verse 26 to 28. The Bible was speaking concerning Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ. And so this, the, top, the subject for my, of my teaching tonight is called, How Shall These Things Be? That's what I want to talk about tonight very quickly. How shall these things be? Now that's the question you ask when you are done with preparation. Everything you need to do, you've done it. And then you are standing between your preparation and your manifestation. And you are asking yourself, how shall these things be? Have you seen people before who labored in fasting and prayer for seven years, for ten years? They've seen all the visions. But now they have come to the season they know is their season. And the question they are asking is, how shall these things be? I've seen the visions. I've seen the dream. I've seen everything that needs to be seen. How shall these things be? When I walked into Abuja, I asked that question. I served ministries for many years. And if I tell you my story of service, you'll be shocked. The last place I served, I was a lecturer in the Bible school. I was supposed to take a lecture in my week. That was the week of 18th of March, 2017. And that week, my lecture was to begin on a Tuesday. My elder brother took ill and he was hospitalized on Monday. 18th of March is a Saturday. He was hospitalized on a Monday. I was going to teach in that Bible school. We were living together. I was staying under him. Yet, I had to go teach because of the, the law that service compelled me to undertake. On Wednesday of that week, he went into coma. He was in coma. I was teaching in the Bible school from Monday to Thursday. The lecture is 8 to 6 p.m. And then from Friday to Saturday, the lecture is from 12 to 6 p.m. And Saturday is 8 to 6 p.m. He was in coma and I was teaching. And on Saturday, when I, on Friday rather, when I finished teaching, they said his case was, was very terrible. On the 18th, 3 p.m., I finished lecture. I wanted to step out for a break. And they called me that he just gave up. The next Sunday was an impartation service. I came back and did the impartation. I didn't need to call anybody. I didn't need anybody's applause. I didn't need anybody's approval. I served that much. Yet, having served like that, when God commissioned me, there were warfares. People who know nothing about the process we followed, the diligence and the service, they could sit down and say what they wanted to say. As if that is not enough, when I entered the city, the season God commissioned me, I had no dime. Fully prepared, entered the city, there was no dime. And I looked at Abuja, Abuja was so big, and I said, Lord, how shall these things be? I wish you sent me to the north. I did most of my ministry in the north. If I go to the north, I don't need so much money. All I need, you can rent a hall in the north for one year, for one million. And then if you get two speakers and a microphone, it's enough. You will gather all the people you are looking for and they are hungry for God. How can you bring me to a city that is full of tired roads? You know, you think tired roads are blessings. When you want to do ministry in the city center, Tar rows, they will scare you. Because if we look to the left and look to the right, you won't find people around. And everybody you see is either driving in a car with a tinted glass and air condition. And even those who don't have money, they move in cabs. When you go to the, the poor regions, you find people trekking. You can begin your evangelism by talking to them. You are starting something in the city center. All the houses have tall fences and you can't dare go knock on somebody's gate and say, I want to share the gospel of Jesus. You will find yourself behind bars. You will know what Paul felt in Acts 16. You will praise God at midnight. I entered the city. The city looked at me. I couldn't enter. And I said, Lord, how shall these things be? That's when I realized you can be prepared and it will still not be enough. And so in Luke 1.26, here was a virgin. 
You know what it takes to be a virgin? To be chaste, to be prepared, ready for your, your groom to take you. She had paid the price for preparation. She had done everything they needed to do. She was a virgin, a chaste one for that matter. But her virginity was not enough for the purpose that was on her head. It is not enough to be prepared for the kind of manifestation that God wants to give to you. Because when God brought the glad tidings, the woman knew that I am a virgin. Her preparation even became an impediment. She said, how shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. God was looking for a virgin. Here was a prepared virgin. But how shall these things be? And the angel revealed to her a secret. He said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. He said, the power of the highest shall overshadow you. He said, that thing that shall be formed in you shall be called the son of the highest. Do you now see that her virginity, which is all she guarded to come to that level, was not the reason why she would get into her manifestation. Because being a virgin is actually a limitation for this kind of thing to happen. The Holy Ghost shall come upon you. And I found a crisis. I now ask myself, what does it mean to be overshadowed by the Holy Spirit? And I routed through scripture from Genesis to Revelation. And I didn't see any scripture that revealed to me what the overshadowing of the Holy Ghost means. And what it means for the power of the highest to come upon you for something to be formed. And while I was laboring over that thought, the Holy Ghost told me to study the same scripture. And he showed me three things that you must do for the Holy Ghost to overshadow you and for the power of the highest to come upon you. Because when he spoke to Mary, Mary began to follow those protocols. And it is in following those protocols that the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit in her life was manifested. Why am I saying this? Some of you have fasted for 10 years. You have served for 7 years. You have done all there is to do. And you came to the junction between your preparation and your manifestation. It is left for the Holy Ghost to overshadow you. For the power of the highest to come upon you. But you don't know what to do. And so you carry your preparation yet you struggle in life. I can tell you I've met many genuine men that have done all their needs to be done yet are struggling because they don't know how to activate the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit. They don't know how to activate the power that forms their purpose from their bellies because that purpose will be formed within you. It will come out of you like a child and you will bet it for your generation to see. That is what brings the originality of your destiny but there is a protocol in the spirit and this protocol is what I want to share with you and you will see why even after you have prayed and fasted you still cannot manifest for your generation. The moment the angel spoke to Mary Mary activated the first protocol. And the first protocol for manifestation after preparation is completed is to receive the proceeding word. To receive that proceeding word. When the man finished preparation, the word of the Lord will come to him. You study the life of Joseph. Joseph was an honorable man. From childhood, he feared the Lord and followed God. In fact, in Genesis 39 verse 9, when Potiphar's wife threw himself, threw herself at Joseph, Joseph said, I cannot do this evil before the Lord. The man was prepared. They sent him to prison. For 14 years in prison, he didn't deny God. But when the time for manifestation came, the word of the Lord had to come to him. The reason many prepared men never manifest is because they don't receive that word. That word that comes to you is what activates the overshadowing dimension of God. You may be quoting the years of your preparation. If you don't receive that word that comes to you, you will discover that your preparation will be there. You will talk about it for a lifetime, but you will never manifest. He said the word of the Lord came to her. And this was what Mary said. He said, be it done to me according to thy word. Be it done to me according to thy word. This is not the Bible you read. I know in the years of your preparation, you read the Bible cover to cover seven times. This is not the scripture you read. 
The scripture you read, you can press into it and pick something. But when it has to do with your destiny, when the season is ripe, the proceeding word will come to you. What we call the word of faith is not the ability to read scripture and memorize them. That is good for principles, for precepts, for training, for correction, for rebuke. But when destiny is about to be born, the whole scripture will not matter. It is the proceeding word that comes to you that will activate the powers that bet destiny. Many people re re quote the whole scripture, they memorize it, but they negate the proceeding word that comes to them. Because most times, it doesn't even come in a spectacular way. Most times, it comes in a very casual and simple way. So they trivialize that word, and they still think by fasting more, something will happen. And God will wait for them to receive that word. Because everything he packaged for their destiny, because their preparation is now complete, he sent that thing to them as the proceeding word of God. That was the same word Jesus spoke about in Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, when he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by the proceeding word of God. That means what takes you from one level of glory to another level of glory is the proceeding words that you receive. I know you have read the Bible. I know you have memorized scriptures. I know you have fasted. I know you have prayed. But to leap from one mountain to another mountain, you need to catch proceeding words. If you don't catch proceeding words, your preparation will be there, but you will never manifest. Mary knew the technology. I followed principled principles, I followed counsels, I followed advices, I followed everything that needs to be followed. I am a chess virgin. But this one you are telling me, no other woman in Nazareth has heard it. This one is for me and it's for me alone. I know there are many virgins in Nazareth. There are some God wants to use for evangelism. There are some God wants to use to sponsor ministry. But this one is not for any other person. This one is only for me. And when you search the whole scripture, only Mary received that word. The word of your destiny is still not sensitive to you. It is specific only to you. When you miss it, you will read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Me and you can compete for John 3.16 because it's available to everybody. Me and you can compete for Matthew 10.7. It's available to everybody. But the proceeding word that came to you, it came in the secrecy of your intimacy with God. No other person will hear it until time passes away. And if you don't catch that word, that word will return back to the spirit realm because that word cannot be better. The power of the Holy Ghost that came with it will return. And you will discover that when you get to heaven, no other person would have heard that word. That word was prepared for you and it was prepared for you alone. Mary caught it. And Jesus is teaching us from Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. He said you can live by every other thing but you cannot live without the proceeding word. The reason you will remain on one mountain fasting all your life is because you have not caught the proceeding word. At one point, you may be happy that you have fasted for 10 years, but the time will come, you will discover that your generation is leaving you behind. You are still fasting, but what will take you from that fasting mountain to the pace where your generation is moving is the proceeding word of God. Many don't catch it. Many don't apprehend it. Many don't know that those simple words that come to them, sometimes in a trance, they are just there lying down and it passes like a picture. And they don't know that, ah, that is their vehicle in the spirit passing. That is the train of the spirit that should move them from where they are to where they ought to be. And they hear that trance, they see that trance, they receive that instruction, they dump it and they come for prayer meeting. They are still blasting in tongues. And they don't know that that word was their vehicle in the spirit. You see why many prepared men fail. You have studied the business. You have studied the principle. Suddenly, you were going home while you were driving. A word passed. And that word gave you an instruction. And you took it for granted. You will continue doing what you have been doing for many years. At best, you will become a master of that thing you are doing. But you will not manifest in your generation. Because the proceeding word is what activates the overshadowing ministry of the Holy Spirit. In Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2, Ezekiel was a prophet. He knew the Torah. He understood the writings of the Torah. In fact, on the strength of his work with the Torah, he was a righteous man. Even when everybody was a captive, Ezekiel was not introduced as a captive. He was introduced as a priest. That means when men were in captivity, the priesthood of Ezekiel was still active. He, was, he didn't fall into the ranks of the captives. 
in captivity, he was still a priest. And being a priest in captivity didn't change the story. But one day, he said, I was among the captives. He didn't say I was a captive. The people there are captives, but me, I'm a priest. And he said, I, the priest, I was among the captives by the river Kabar. And I saw visions of God. And in chapter 2, verse 2, he said, when he spoke to me, when he spoke to me, he said the word entered, the spirit entered into me. That means the word is the conductor of the spirit. The word is what causes the overshadowing. I was there praying. I had a very strong priesthood, but I was still among the captives. What will it take you from among the captives to become a prophet of Israel and to speak the position and the possibilities of a generation is the proceeding word that comes. He said, as he spoke to me, suddenly it was not the word that entered me. The spirit entered into me. And he said, the spirit carried me to my feet. That means he would have remained crippled in captivity except as the word came. There may be something you are going through. What you need is the proceeding word. I know you memorize scripture. That is good. But that will only educate you about the ways of the spirit. What will shift you from where you are to where you ought to be is your ability to apprehend the proceeding word of God. A man in captivity caught it and suddenly he lifted to his feet. Could you imagine how sensitive this simple story can appear in scripture and the weight that they carry it? How can a man be a priest carrying out priesthood for many years all his life yet he remains among captives? Have you not seen people? They are fasting machines literally. You meet them every week. They fast five times. You meet them every day. They pray for ten hours. Yet they are still in poverty. And you are asking, this is your prayer. Doesn't it produce anything? You find a prayer warrior. Every month, in every month, he fasts and pray for 21 days. Yet, he is still in crisis. His health is failing. His finances are failing. His family, people are dying. And you are wondering, how can you pray like this and things are wrong? The proceeding world is eluding him. The man is a priest, but he's among the captives. He's among the captives. He's praying, but he can't take his promotion. He's praying, but he can't take his breakthrough. He's praying. Things are going wrong because the answer is not with the prayer. The prayer creates an atmosphere for the answer. The answer is the proceeding word. And so if he prays and doesn't catch that proceeding word, he will pray and at the end of the day, he will have a glorious title of a prayer warrior. But as touching destiny, he will be a gallant failure. Because what moves you from where you ought to be to where you will be is the proceeding word of God. Many can't catch it. Many can't believe it. Many can't receive it. This is why the same spiritual thing that one did and was promoted, 10 others do the same and they are never promoted. And you are wondering, three brothers gather together and they begin to pray every day for six hours. After six months, one of them suddenly shot out like a star. And then you are wondering, all of us have been coming to this mountain praying. It's not the mountain that shifts men. It's the proceeding world. I'm telling you why many people go on Bible study. They do the Bible study together. At the end of the day, out of ten, one is shut out. And you are wondering, are we not reading this Bible? Sometimes, instead of going deeper and waiting for your word, you become jealous. That jealousy will create a bigger distraction and you will never catch it. Because if you catch your word, 20 of you can manifest in the same season and it will still not be enough because God wants to take over the whole world. If you see few people manifesting, it's because few people are the ones catching the preceding world because reality is encapsulated in words. Those words make the difference in a man's life. You are where you are because of the preceding words you have caught. You are where you are because of the preceding words you have interpreted. You are where you are because of the preceding words you have believed. Too many people are missing these things every day. We come to church, we don't even know that we came searching for words. The guy can be listening to a message. Instead of catching his word, he's carried away. And he doesn't know that he came like an archaeologist. Looking for when the word of the Lord will come. He's not moved. Thank God for the message. He has said a thousand messages about love. He has said a thousand messages about prosperity. He has said a thousand messages about prayer. Now that he's hearing it, he's searching for the word. 
Which word is here for me? My brother gave a testimony the other time. He said, when you were speaking, you said in three days, somebody will sell three lands. And you also said that somebody is entering into the real estate business. Many were in the service. One caught it. And true to that word, in three weeks, they gave him 25 hectares of land. That land had always been there, but the land was pregnant in the world. And when the word came, he caught it. The land had no choice but to manifest. Many are not sensitive to words because they don't know the importance. God cannot do anything until he speaks. As powerful as he is, he can't do nothing until he speaks. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, the Bible said, God created the heavens and the earth. And he said the earth was without form. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God hovered upon the face of the deep. But nothing happened. That's why you come for a service. You feel the anointing of God so strong. Some people fall down. Some people weep. Yet nothing happened. Because no matter how the spirit hovers, the overshadowing cannot happen. It's until God speaks and you catch it. That's when things can change. You can't possess the atmosphere of the service except as you catch the word. You can't possess the atmosphere of the generation except as you catch the word. You will sit down and see men that you have more preparation going ahead. And you are wondering, I trained this guy in foundation school. I discipled this guy. How come this guy suddenly has gone ahead and the whole world is hearing him? You have more preparation, but he has more ability to catch. And the more he catches, the more he's enlarged. The more he catches, the bigger he becomes as far as the agenda of God is concerned. That thing you are going through is nothing. Your major problem is your inability to catch the word of God. If you catch the word of God, you will discover that that circumstance that you have magnified is really nothing. God can bring the dead back to life. God can lift a beggar from the tongue. The problem is, will he hear the word? Will he catch it? If he can't catch it, there's a problem. No matter what God wants, nothing can happen. Hope you read the story of Mary. He said you are highly favored. The favor counted for nothing. It is when she caught the word that all of the possibilities that were captured in the heart of God became her personal possession. Too many persons cannot catch the proceeding word of God. The creative power of God is locked in the proceeding word. You may hear 10 messages, 20 messages before you catch one word. And so if you know how this thing works, when you are seated, you are like a, a router. You are scanning. You are scanning like a radar. You are looking for your word. You are looking for your word. Sometimes when I want to, I want to grow in the healing anointing, I can gather 30 messages. I'm hearing them. Some of them I've heard before. Suddenly, while I am listening, something will just be activated. The moment it comes, you can sense the energy. You will know that this one is a capsule. It came with something. Your poverty can break in a moment if you can catch that word. Your conditions of affliction can break if you catch that word. But the problem is that we don't tune ourselves to receive the word. We casually become religious and we enjoy the cliche and we forget why we gather. Thank God for the heavy praise that is going on. But as I'm dancing, I'm looking for my word in case God will say something. Thank God for the word of God that is going on. I'm not carried away by the English. I'm not carried away by the atmosphere. I am sensitive in case God will say something. And if God doesn't say anything, I will add prayer to it. I will add focus to it. By all means, something must enter my spirit. Because when you leave the service, you will leave everything behind. It's the word you catch that you go with. Meanwhile, that word you catch symbolizes everything that happened in the service. But if you can catch it, then you can have it. If you cannot catch it, you can never have it. You see, until the time that his word came. Until the time that his word came. Is it possible that you are in poverty? Apostles have laid hands on you. You have attended prayer meetings. You have gone to prayer mountains. But you have not catch your word. You have not caught your word. Even though the word is flying by every day. The word is flying by every day. You have not caught it. Could that be the reason why you are still where you are? Could that be the reason why you are still in your affliction? Because you have not caught your word. When I was much younger in the faith, I focused more on men. I can travel from here to Lagos for a man to touch me. 
and this man we minister in a five days conference in that five days conference I'm not paying attention to receive anything my strategy is to make sure I touch his shoe or touch something about it and I distract myself in a five days conference whereas the mature believers when they come for the conference when they are talking they are celebrating they are jumping they are catching their walls and when they finish they go their life is improving I am touching people, robbing people. I am not going anywhere. What is the difference? I discovered what invokes the power of God are the capsules of word that is sent into your spirit man. And when a man wants to truly transit in life, he begins to look for the proceeding word. Thank God for the logos that you studied in Bible school. Thank God for the logos that you are taught in every fellowship meeting. But have you been able to pick the rema word that comes in your direction? Have you been able to pick the rema word that comes for your circumstance? That's what makes the difference. The virgin would have remained barren except as she caught the word. And when a man catches a word, the proof that he has caught it is that he believes it because he knows this one is mine. He knows this one is not a verse in the Bible. There are many verses in the Bible. Thank God for them. I study them. But when I catch the word that belongs to me, it ceases to be a verse in the Bible. It becomes my word. And when I journey, I hold it with myself as my wealth. Because your true wealth is not Naira. It's not dollar. Your true wealth are the words that you have apprehended. When you catch it, it changes your life forever. Find men that are making impact in this kingdom. They can tell you where and when God spoke to them. And some of them have just three words and they have affected the whole world. Some of them have seven words. They have affected the whole world. Those words turn them to champions and generals in their generation. And you are wondering, how is this man so big? There are wars in the spiritual bank. Most of you have money. You will still lose it with time. Most of you have connection. You will still lose it with time. But any word you catch is yours eternally. I saw in the news the other time, they were disputing with the children of Israel over land. And when the children of Israel showed up, you will expect them to argue that they have lived here for long. You know how they argue for their land? They go and open Deuteronomy. <laughs> and say, God told us <laughs> that this land from, <laughs> I'm like, are you okay? In United Nations, UN have no regard for the Bible. But when Israel show up, why can't you leave this land? God told us from the river Euphrates. <laughs> God has told us that this is our land. And if you like, gather Iran, gather Jordan, gather, all of them can gather. So long as they stand on that scripture, nothing can take them from there. Because the word of God never lies. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away. Not one jot or tittle shall pass away. In 1967, when the Six Day War happened, six nations gathered against Israel with all the ammunition in the world. They went back to the scripture. You said, this land, from here to here, from here to here, belong to us. And when the battle started, the nations were interviewed later. They said at 12 noon, they noticed that their tanks began to explode when nobody was throwing bombs. Because the God that gave that word, because these men caught it and they kept it as an inheritance, he began to provoke the jealousy of that God and he couldn't sleep on the throne. The faithfulness of God was provoked because if you like, be more than them. He can be 10 against one. They don't fight war by statistics. They fight war by proceeding wars. And it doesn't matter how many nations gather against them. So long as they are standing on that war, they know there is one called the lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David. They know that one. And with that one, they know they have the best asanas. Which war do you carry? You think you can enter Abuja and conquer by luck? There are gates in this city, sir. There are invisible gates in this city. Those gates we only open to the carriers of the world. You think we go to the banking world and just succeed. There are gates. Every system has gates. And when you show up, your key is the word that is spoke concerning you. No matter the plan, no matter the manipulation, no matter. See, they can do whatever they want. Carry with you words. The Bible says carry it, carry it. It's an asset that has power 
in the natural, in the spirit. I tell you why many men are not making impact. They are barren of words. There's no word in their spirit. They are waiting for prophets to lay hands on them. They are waiting for apostles to pour oil on them. No matter the oil poured on you, if you have no words in your spirit, in the day of trouble you will faint. Because the integrity of God only stands to defend his word. And so every individual that wants to, like Mary, become the greatest among all women must catch her word. You must catch your word. When you catch it, you become invincible. The first protocol for activating the overshadowing dimension of the Holy Ghost is the proceeding word of God. I can tell you how many God told me. And usually there are not many. I can quote a thousand scriptures. But the words God gave me are not up to five. And it's not the thousand verses of scripture I know that carry me forward. Every season of my life, I can tell you, this is where God spoke to me from. And this is what God told me. And when the chiefs are down, all my connections fail. All my trust fail. I will go back to God and say, Lord, this is what you said. God cannot deny his word. And so when God wants to lift a man, he sends a word in his direction. Some come in form of pictures as trances. Some come in form of audible utterances. Some come in form of knowings and witnesses. When those words come, like Habakkuk, write them down. Write them down. When you trap them, they become assets greater than dollars in your account. When you trap them, they become assets that heaven and earth cannot deny. This is what makes men manifest. There are many prepared men that fail to catch their words. I went for a conference in Lagos and we came with a lot of hunger. And here was Pastor Chris showed up and he said, I was praying and waiting upon the Lord. And he said, the word of the Lord for this conference came into the room. And then I had not even understood these things well. I said, what do you mean the word of the Lord came? He said, the word came into the room. And he said, as I was praying, he said, it floated and left and it was going. And he said, quickly, my spirit caught it. So the reason he can bring the blessing into that conference is because he caught the word. The reason he can create a chain is because he caught the word. This is why the patriarchs are so bold. When they come into the meeting, they are not atmosphere sensitive. If you like, let the atmosphere be strong. If you like, let the atmosphere be weak. When they stand up and say, God told me, any declaration they make, the jealousy of God brings it to pass. They know the technology. This is why they don't struggle. A man who understands how this thing works can enter a city and for one year he has not done anything. Because he knows activities cannot change anything. He knows popularity cannot change anything. It's only a young believer who doesn't understand the dynamics of the spirit. That thinks because he's popular. That thinks because he has money. He can change things. You don't change things with anything in the natural. When you have understanding, as you come there, you will wait for the word. When the word meets you there, the city will meet you there. When the word meets you there, the resources will meet you there. When the word meets you there, every man you need in your destiny will meet you there. Because when God created Adam, he didn't tell him to run around the earth. He kept him in Eden. Everything comes to Eden. Eden is the proceeding word of God. But too many people don't have it. If I ask you now, in a moment, and I said, take a deep thought and ask yourself, what has God told you personally? You will be shocked how naked you are. Because you are not naked because you are not with dress. You are actually naked because you have no word. And when the devil is hunting people, he doesn't hunt everybody. When the devil is hunting people, he hunts men that have no word. Because he knows these ones, they don't have the backing of heaven. But when a man has a word with him, the devil knows it's a waste of spiritual asana. He won't go to that man. Because if you like, take that man to the grave, he will rise again. When Jesus was walking Nazareth, he said, three days, he said, destroy this temple. After three days, it will be built up again. When Jesus died, he didn't need to struggle in the grave. He was there resting. When it was three days, he said, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the glory of the Father, rose him from the dead. It wasn't Jesus' duty to rise from the dead. It was the duty of the Holy Ghost to insist that because a word came and he caught it, even if he's sleeping in the grave, he must rise. On the third day, 
the whole head is scattered. The man came back to life. Nothing can stop a man that has caught his word. The reason you are stoppable is because you have not caught your word. When you catch your word, you can rest. Because that's what we call the Sabbath. The Sabbath is not Sunday evening. The Sabbath is not Saturday morning. You can argue it from the perspective of the Jews and you can argue it from the perspective of the Pentecostals. The Sabbath is the word of God that brings you to your rest. When you catch it, you enter the rest of God. Because even when you die, you will rise again. That word will provoke the power of the Holy Ghost to resurrect everything in your life that has died. Too many men are empty of word. They pray, they fast, but they don't know that the key to their destiny is with words. And so when God sends a man to you, honor that man, love him, but honor what comes out of him much more than him. Because what comes out of him is what will define you. And when God sends you to a man and he's talking, wait to hear what God is saying. If you catch your word, you've gotten it all. When Mary caught her word, Joseph was thinking of putting her away. You want to disgrace this woman like this? If Joseph puts her away, she'll be stoned to death. They will call her an adulterer. The generation frowns against it. While Joseph was sleeping, Mary did nothing, but she has caught the word. The angel of the Lord went to Joseph's dream and said, you cannot put this woman away. He said, what she's carrying in her womb is the son of the highest. When you catch your word, God may send you to the economic world. People will gang up against you. When you go back to God, he will say, rest. The people that are captains, architects trying to pull you down, because of that word, angels will be mobilized to them and tell them, you can't touch this one. God spoke to Jacob. Jacob was a wise man. He was going to a foreign land. He knew that all his wisdom and technocracy can subdue Esau, not Laban. Laban is wiser than Esau. Laban is a manipulator. He's the king of subverters. So you can subdue Esau, not Laban. When he was going, he held the angel. You must say something to me. And he told him that when you return, the guy knew too much. The Bible said 10 times Laban sought change him, but he must prosper. You can't stop this man. He's pregnant with a word. And when Laban saw changing ten times, a wisdom came to him. He spoiled Laban when he left. When Laban was pursuing him, Laban himself said, I have come to understand by divination that God has blessed me because of you. Even in the kingdom of darkness, they told Laban, you are being blessed because a man who carries the word has entered your camp. When Laban wanted to destroy Jacob, God showed up and said, don't as much as touch him. Because if you touch him, you are touching the word that he carries. I will destroy you. This is why Laban was restrained from Jacob. Who told you you are a victim? Who told you you are not qualified? Who told you you are useless? You are not useless. The weight of your life is based on the word you have caught. Today, you may be poor. But if God tells you, you will change this word. Look at the rich and tell them, better look for me. Because what I'm carrying is bigger than 10 million. What I'm carrying is bigger than a billion in dollars. You may not have the money now, but you are pregnant with a word. Sometimes when God wants to show the excellency of this mystery, he goes to a little boy. Israel was in crisis. Saul was causing havoc in Israel. God didn't go to the technocrats. He went to a boy that was in the wilderness. In the family, there were seven people ahead of him. They didn't even consider him. When Samuel came to look for the king, they didn't call David. That is the extent to which they kicked the guy away. And Saul checked seven of them. He couldn't find one. He said, don't you have any other son? They said, well, there's somebody. There's one guy in the wilderness. But, I mean, he doesn't have any destiny. What can? He's a shepherd. He's only good to guide sheep. Ah, you don't know that the word he carries is the word of the king. When David showed up, immediately, he became more qualified than Eliab that looked like a general. People spend time building their muscles. They have six pack, ten pack, but when you check their spirit, there's no word. That's why when they are done building the muscles, they become bouncers for those who don't have muscles. Because the muscles within is bigger than the muscle without. The last wedding we went for, the word black, this is, 
they, their chest was as if they put some balloon inside. And they usually, they, 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 they six pack. We came like this. I say, go like that, go like that. We passed. We didn't have ten pack, but we came with authority. And so the man who carries the word, we employ the one who carries the muscle. So while you are building the muscle in the natural, make sure you carry something. There is darkness coming to this world. Economy will melt. The government will fail. System will crumble. What will make you invincible is the word that you carry. That word can lift you from the prison and take you to the palace. This is what makes for manifestation. Every other thing is secondary except as you catch your word. How many words are you conscious of? One thing I will never forget one day. I was sick and I was lying down on the bed and demons were tormenting me that this is the end. And fear gripped me. I stand up so much pain on my chest. I couldn't do anything. I became afraid. And I was begging God, will I end like this? Will I die like this? And God didn't answer. After three days, suddenly, it looked as if somebody sat on my bed behind me. I felt the bed go down. The presence that the person came with was so glorious. I was too afraid to turn. And after a while, as he walked through me from behind, he said, because I live, you shall live also. My God, immediately a being left my body. Because I live, you shall live also. Listen, I'm not afraid of any man in this world. I'm not afraid of any system in this world. I can enter anywhere, anytime. I know me, I will succeed. Not because I'm wise, not because I'm smart, but there is a word that have re-engineered my molecular structure. He said, because I live, you will see tomorrow. Listen, you will have to train me for a thousand years to think failure. I know that anything I touch works. That's why I'm careful not to touch wrong things. Because if I touch anything, it must prosper. There is something I receive from the Lord. This is why we are bold. When we show up, it doesn't matter our age. It doesn't matter which part of the country we come from. It doesn't matter the standard you have set. We are breakers of protocols. We alter systems. We change things. Because we carry words in our spirit. We carry words. We carry words. I can go somewhere. My English may not be good enough. They still need me. I can go somewhere. My face may not look like who they are looking for. But they need me. This generation need me. The generation after this one need me. Not because I'm smart. Not because I'm anointed. But there's a word. It says, because I live, you shall see tomorrow. So I know now that I'm a joy of many generations. I know. I know. And the same applies to you. I'm not talking about me because I'm an apostle. This is the heritage of the sons of God. This is the heritage. For a Bible study, the vice president is coming. We want you to teach there. I checked. I said, oh, sorry. I have Bible study. I wasn't rushing. I said, hey, I'm going to preach where the vice president is. I honor him. He's a minister. He's even a senior minister to me. He was a pastor before I knew Jesus. So this is not pride. This is not looking down. But I knew that this small Bible study we are doing, one day presidents will come here. There's a war. There's a war. There's a war. There's a war. This is why we don't run helter skelter. Begging men, please help me, help me. No, there's a word. Every man I need will find me. Everything I'm looking for will find me. The word has made me eaten. People can look at you and say, You are young, you are small. Laugh. The word you carry is ancient. 
because the one that spoke he spoke from the studio of eternity he spoke from somewhere when the angel spoke to Mary the word didn't originate with the angel hail Mary full of grace the Lord is with you blessed are thou blessed are thou among women Mary said how shall this thing be he said don't bother you have found favor with the Lord those words come from region Sitana the quarters where those utterances came from were dimensions that better the earth the very studio of eternity was where that word was crafted they checked you out they know your context they know your limitation but when the king uttered his oracles he knows that even with the heaven and earth pass away those words will stand your strength is in the word that you carry in your spirit from the presidency but I will not look down on this Bible study the Bible study today there may be 50 people but I will not look down on it because I know one day this Bible study will disciple a generation and so I can suspend certain honors I can suspend certain opportunities and I'm not under pressure while the person was talking to me even my wife was listening she just nodded I say you are a kingdom person you have understanding don't be afraid. Search for words. Search. 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 In Isaiah 34 verse 16, it says, Search ye from the book of the law and read. None of these things shall fail. He said, None shall desire her mate. He said, I the Lord, I have spoken it. My spirit have gathered it. Search. He said to the law and to the prophets, if they hearken not to this word, it means there is no light in them. There is a light we carry that has assured us that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil, for God is with us. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your family will not fail. Your ministry will not fail. Search for the words. And when you find them, you can become a commander in your generation. This is why when men gather around you, don't waste your time. He said, surely they shall gather. It's not with me. I'm not double-mouthed. I didn't speak to you and speak to those men. They will gather. It's your man for nothing. And it's every tongue that rises against you. In judgment, thou shalt condemn. Because a higher tongue have spoken. When God speaks that I will make you, any man that says you will go down is a joker. A higher tongue has spoken. This is the insurance system of the sons of light. We are not limited, brothers and sisters. Today, I may not have all the connection I need. Give it time. I may not have all the money I need. Give it time. I'm pregnant with something. And until the time that that word comes, kings will look for you. It's possible for Pharaoh to search for you in the prison and bring you out and make you ruler of his substance, teacher of his senators. Nobody is disadvantaged except as you lack words. That's why I say, carry with you words. Carry, carry, carry words, carry words, carry words. The mirror is not an accurate representation of you. When next you look at the mirror, tell the mirror you have tried, but I'm bigger than what you are showing me. You are, you try, you have tried. Thank you for showing me the lines of the beers. I appreciate it. Thank you for showing me the eyelashes. Thank you for showing me the suit. I'm bigger than what you are showing me. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm bigger than everything in the world. The mirror cannot capture the dimensions of the world. Yet I'm bigger than the world. How can the mirror give me an expression of myself? That's why your confidence cannot come from what the mirror told you. The mirror is a miniature representation of you. You are bigger. He said, I have put eternity in their hearts. The mirror can't capture the dimensions of eternity. Yet you carry it. 
the mirror can't represent you. The mirror can try, but your confidence is on something deeper than the mirror. Oh, he mean how can the devil come and tell you you will die of cancer you will die of hepatitis you will die of he, he, does he know you he said he said you were a desolate land he said no man went through you he said but listen I have made you a joy of many generations a joy I'm not just talking about this generation generations to come they will call me blessed that's what Mary said in Luke chapter 1 around verse 40 to 46 after Elizabeth saluted her when she lifted her voice to pray he said now he said many generations shall call me blessed how can a widow how can a virgin a young virgin speak like that that word suddenly made her realize that she's a stream flowing through many generations many generations shall call me blessed. This young man playing the bass guitar today, you may think he's an instrumentalist. You don't know the word that is in his spirit. You don't know the word. My friend, do in Oyeka, Seven years ago, he was a bassist. But today, he's a revivalist to a generation. He's a priest bringing the presence of God to different territory. This evening, he's flying to London to bless the UK. Crowd of all races we gather. Once upon a time, he was a bassist. Today, he's an, he ushers the presence of God to different nations. Somebody may be an usher at the door. You look at him, you say, usher. That's a wrong title, sir. Before you call a man a name, find out what God told him. It is better you ask him, what did God say to you? What did God say to you? What did God say to you? You will discover that seven years later, presidents of nations will be booking appointment to see that man. And when you see him, his past and his future can never resemble. Because the difference between your past and your future is not time, it's an utterance from God. You are not limited, brothers and sisters. The word you carry is your future. Your future is not in tomorrow. Your future is in your belly. That word you carry, that's your future. I don't care what tomorrow brings because I carry my tomorrow in my inside. God has told me tomorrow. And so when I want to look for tomorrow, I don't look at time. When I look for tomorrow, I look in word because God spoke and, I, and those seasons, they open up. Some of you today might be illiterate. You don't even have money to go to the university. But there's a word you carry. That word said, kings will come to your rising. They will come to the brightness of your rising. And so you are waiting for the day of your rising. You are waiting for the day of the brightness of your rising. You know that kings will find me. And so you are searching that light. You are digging that light out. Kings will come here. Change your story. 
this is the morning of your life. The doctors may have told you you have 20 days to live. I came to tell you, you shall not die, but live to proclaim the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. This is the morning of your life. Arise and shine, for thy light is come. Pray in the Holy Ghost for one minute. something. You forgot it. Some of you, five years ago, God told you something. You forgot it. You will go back to that mountain of encounter and carry that word. Some of you need to go back to the past to be able to go into the future. Because what God said is behind you. You left it. In the next one minute, you will go back there. Ezekiel said, the hand of the Lord was upon me and he carried me to a mountain of dry bones and he said the bones were really dry and he said son of man shall these bones live he said only thou knowest and he said prophesy prophesy and he said I prophesied as I was commanded in Ezekiel 37 verse 9 he said speak to the east wind to come and fill up this boat and he said as he spoke the wind entered them Something was spoken about you five years ago. Pick that word now and make war. Make war. Make war. Defy your present circumstance. Defy it. Hunger is saying something. Sickness is saying something. Disfavor is saying something. Pick that word and defy the present. Defy the present. Atakatoa. I am not a failure. I am not a weakling. I am more than a conqueror, for the word of the Lord says so. Mateke Dona. Mareve Kairos. Savo Tetaliana Da. Jesus God told you you will be a chief justice of this country and then the devil is talking to you that the last six chief justice are Muslims and then you are trying to say it's not possible forget it the one who spoke spoke from a realm stronger than religion God told you you shall be a governor but you check the friend you put you in prison and you carry the logo of an ex-convict and your name have not been cleansed. There was a Joseph that was in prison that left the prison and became a prime minister. God can still say something. God can still say something. God told you, you will sponsor visions across the world. But, but poverty is saying something. Forget about what the circumstances say. Pick the word of the Lord tonight and wage war. Wage war in the spirit. The devil is telling you, now you are 65 years old. Your time has passed. It's not true. Abraham gave birth at 100 years. God is still saying something. It's not time-based. It's eternity-based. War in the spirit. Takakatora. Abelekabana. 
havianda kwate aswa 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 shaleto berak tata barote ev falon aziga gala shunatae sickness is a feminine i came to tell you you shall not die there's a word of the lord for you you will live to proclaim the goodness of god in the land of the living god told you you will change the fortune of people and nations but poverty is saying something different i came to tell you the word of the lord will stand in your lifetime you will sponsor visions and you will bet purposes god told you you shall be a prophet to the nation but sin and immorality lying is saying something else i came to tell you the refiner's fire will put you again that iniquity will not take you down god told you you will rule this nation but the politics of political parties are saying something different i came to tell you that promotion does not come from the south it does not come from the east it does not come from the west it is god that lifts men and by the spirit of god be lifted up now you can't be small your word is come tonight and you are escaped from your window Thank you father. Thank you father. Please go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost for 1 minute. Pray in the Holy Ghost for 1 minute. Things are moving in this atmosphere. Catch something, catch something. Some of you what God told you 20 years ago. This atmosphere is unraveling it. Take hold of it before you leave this hall. Some of you what God told you 15 years ago. The Holy Ghost is bringing it to your remembrance. He said keep me in remembrance of my word. Keep me in remembrance of my word. My word will not fail. Matakaboa, arikaba da falosh, atetatatani, mantakiba. Men have betrayed you. Men have disappointed you. But when God spoke, He spoke from the premise of His sovereignty, not based on human connection. His words will not lie. Eyalo abenak, valavari atetatalish. The encounter you need tonight to receive it. I release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation. I know it's here.
Thank you, Father. Some of you, there are curses hanging on your head. I came to speak over you tonight. Every curse and every negative pronouncement over your life, because you came under this unction, I decree now they are broken in the name of Jesus. Some of you, there are manipulations from covens of darkness and demonic altars to reduce the quality of your life. Now I speak over you as a priest of the Most High in the order of Melchizedek. Every negative manipulation over your life is declared broken. Go forward and prosper. Hear this. Some of you will receive strange favors from strange quarters. You don't need to know everybody to prosper. Your helpers, the Bible said they will come from afar. It says strangers will stand to build your wall. People you don't know, they rise up to favor you. It said you will suck the breast of kings. And he said, the wealth of the Gentiles shall be converted to you. In the name of Jesus, eat of the good of the land. Every hidden treasure is open to you now. In the name of Jesus. Everything eating up your seasons. Now they are judged. Now they are judged. Now they are judged. The wasted years are restored. In the name of Jesus. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. You reign. You reign. Somebody's receiving a strange anointing. There is a grace that restores 20 years of captivity. Yes, eaten up by the devil. Now they are being restored. You will achieve in one month much more than you have had in 10 years. Strange things begin to happen to you. Angels are ministering now. Please be sensitive. Some of you will receive fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Ushers, please help those ones. The power of God literally overshadows you now. The hand of God that lifts men. It rests upon you now. Take that fire now. Break forth. Oh, fountains of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, oh, fountains of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. He said when Israel left Egypt, Judah was his sanctuary. He said the sea saw them and fled. Jordan went backward. The mountains skipped like rams. Now in the name of Jesus, I command every mountain before you, skip like rams. I command Jordan, go back. I command the sea, flee in the name of Jesus. Some of you in seven days, you will receive a turnaround that will shock your existence. Yeah. Revival is not just people being set on fire. Revival also provokes economic explosion. Tonight, the spirit of poverty and oppression is judged. Yeah. 
No one lives here under the bondage of poverty and oppression. We arrest them now. Go forward and prosper. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lift your hands and bless the Lord. Lift your hands and bless the Lord. Something has changed in your life. The result will prove it. Some of you in seven days. Some of you in 14 days. Some of you in 21 days. You will notice a radical turnaround. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the precious name of Jesus. If you were blessed by this message you just listened to and you wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior, kindly repeat the prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, and that he died for my sins and was raised from the dead for my justification. I therefore confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you just said this prayers, please send us an email at info at encounterjesusministry.org or info.ejmi.ng at gmail.com. You can also visit our website at www.encounterjesusministry.org.